Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for another episode of Porn Star Confessions. Today I'm super excited. I've got Blaine O'Connor. Welcome. Hey, what's up guys? Blaine O'Connor here. Uh, tapping in from Austin, Texas. It's actually a mild day here. It's only 95, so that's actually cold for us. But yeah, happy to be here. Oh, shit. Happy to be. <laughs> I'll take 95. I will take 95. <laughs> but first question, well, okay, first question, how old are you? Uh, 33. 30. Oh, fuck. Dude, I wish I could be 33 again. Shit. Man, it feels, it's it's a good age, man. I feel good. You know, I feel good. Uh, I probably, I probably look, you know, I don't want to sound too, too like narcissistic, but I feel like I look better now at 33 than I did at 24, which is kind of cool. <laughs> and I feel better. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> like, I look back on pictures when I was on my 20s, I was like, God, I was fucking ugly. Right? You're like you fall into yourself when you turn into like your mid thirties. Like, okay, I'm, I'm digging it. I'm falling into this. I like it. Yeah, no, agreed, hundred percent. Second question, and I usually don't ask people, where did the last name O'Connor come from? So, um, my last name, my heritage, uh, has a lot of Scott Irish descent. So, I kind of wanted to stay inside of my heritage. So, I kept I O'Connor. Is kind of like a, uh, it's nowhere close where my last name is at all, but it's Scott Irish. So I'm like, I'm going to keep it, you know, kind of in the heritage. I'm going to try. <laughs> so, okay. All right. A little different. I like that. Oh, it's a good name. Blaine is, yeah, I like that name. It's interesting. It's kind of edgy. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. No, you picked a good name. You picked a very good name. I Unfortunately... <laughs> For me, my ex picked the name Jason Collins, unbeknownst to me at the time. Yeah. That was also the name of a famous basketball player. And I'm like, fuck. Oh, yeah, Jason Collins, yeah, basketball. Yeah. So, like, it's hard to come up in searches that way. So you picked a good one. Actually, I did. I looked it up a couple of times. I'm like, there's. if you look at my Twitter, there is no Blaine O'Connor. My Instagram, there is no Blaine O'Connor. Well, I'm sure there is, but mm -hmm. there is, there's nobody. It's just me. <laughs> Okay. All right. Cool. That's a good one. <laughs> so let's talk about you. Like, where does your story begin? Not not porn, but like, what was your life growing up? Okay. Uh, so I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, big corn husker fan. Love my corn huskers. Uh, grew up farming with my grandparents. And then at uh, 18, I decided that I wanted to join the military because I didn't really have anything that I was good at so i figured why not did that for four years uh actually got out got an engineering degree um yeah went did the engineering route worked for um one of the largest engineering or hvac companies in the entire world and did that for 12 years and then uh yeah segued out of that because covid and i was like yeah i'm gonna be my own boss for a little bit so oh, kind of just like uh kind of like a Long way to get here, but I guess I got here. <laughs> Better late than never. Okay. <laughs> so I'm assuming you went into the Army? Uh, Navy, Construction Battalion. Oh, shit. Okay, yeah. Navy. Why, why the Navy? So the Navy had this special branch of guys called the Construction Battalion, which um, their main goal is to, uh, their, the, uh, the motto is they build, we build, we fight. So you learn a trade while also protecting, like, you know, the country. So um, my main goal thing when I joined the military is I wanted to go to Afghanistan because my dad had been there, my cousin had been there, my grandpa had been there, my uncle had been there, and I wanted to uh, carry on the legacy. So, like, that was my biggest thing. I was like, well, I don't want to be, you know, a grunt. And when I get out in four years, be like, well, anybody hiring a mercenary, you know? I, I was like, I didn't think that would be a good, you know, a good long-term uh decision so i was like well, what can i do i was like well you have we have the the cbs um and i'm like okay you know so i learned um chillers boilers cooling towers um hvac you know um generators stuff like that plumbing and yeah it just just kind of snowballed it was pretty cool actually because i did that for I, I did it for many 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 years and i really enjoyed it and i'll probably go back to it someday but yeah, sure. it's awesome. It's, you know, you, you work hard, you play hard kind of thing. <laughs>
Damn. No, you and my son actually have the same job. He's just in the army, not in the Navy. Oh, he's probably uh not Red Horse. What would that be? Eleven, not eleven Bravo. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about though. I know I know the Yeah, no, he's combat, in Iraq right now. Combat engineer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. So you just like, it was kind of like a family thing to go into the military. Yeah. Then. I mean, when you're from Nebraska, from a small town, that's pretty much what you do. You just, you grow up, you join the military, you go off to college. And, you know, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't the brightest crane in the box. So uh, <laughs> I was like, I guess I'll do the military. <laughs> So when you say small town, like how small are we talking here? Uh, like 25, 30,000. Okay. All right. That's... Yeah. Now it's right. 150. So it blew up. <laughs> oh, sure. Okay. So school for you growing up, you were kind of, uh, I'm trying to think of what word to attach. Eccentric? <laughs> I uh, didn't take it too seriously. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> there was no point, you know, because you know what you're going to do. Like, there's not a lot of options, you know. You either play sports, go to college, or go to the military. It's That's pretty much it, you know. Like, my cousins, for example, my one cousin was 6'4", 240. He got a D1 scholarship. My other one was 6'3", 170. He got a D1 scholarship for baseball. And then here I was, I was like five, seven, 140 coming out of high school. I was like, I don't have a lot of options. <laughs> so you knew you were going into the military, oh, yeah. like when you first entered into high school. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Going into my junior year, my parents were just like, just get through one more year. <laughs> oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> and my senior year, my parents were just like, can y'all just let him graduate so he can just move on with his life? Because he's already got his mind set on what he wants to do. <laughs> okay. So what made you pick that, like, profession in the Navy, though? Do uh, you just like working with your hands, yeah. like mechanically yeah. inclined? Or? Yeah, my my grandpa was a, uh, he was a firefighter, and then he was a handyman, and we would every, you know, we would fix everything on the farm by hand, you know, just grab whatever we got, you know, put it back together, and you know, make it work until, you know, the part comes in. So it was kind of something always in the family that we would just make it run until it doesn't run anymore. So it just kind of, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good for you. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, you definitely sound like you would excel at that. Oh yeah. I loved it. We, I had a great time. I really enjoyed what I did. So you really enjoyed like your time in the military as a whole. Yeah. I did, because it gave me, like, a completely different outlook, out, outlook on life, you know, coming from a small town and then uh, going to Afghanistan, Germany, Spain. It really gives you, like, at a very young age, you learn a lot about life. And I'm like, cool, you know, like, I got the opportunity to do things that I don't think a lot of people will ever do. Or, uh, you know, and if they do, I don't think they would have did what I did. Because I did a lot of humanitarian things. Like, I built uh, schools for kids, like in Afghanistan. Like, I did all kinds of just really fun things. And it's just really, really rewarding, more or less. Of. So, it was actually kind of fun. Okay. I, my military experience was spectacular. <laughs> Damn. This is, like, in stark contrast. God, I'm trying to think. Who did I... In you the other day oh god fuck i interviewed somebody and they joined the navy and they're like i fucking hated it i couldn't wait to leave <laughs> it's the opposite of you yeah i just you know i i i'm just grateful you know what i mean because like some of the things that i got to do while i was in there i didn't fully appreciate until i got out and i'm like wow that was actually pretty cool uh, <laughs> why didn't you stay longer though uh, I knew after four, well, after, um, so they had the, um, they had a higher tenure kind of thing going on. The military was kind of locked up. So they're like, Hey, uh, for the next four to six years, there is a good possibility. You're not going to get paid anymore. You're not going to promote, uh, you're going to get really bad orders and you're not going to get to go where you want to go. And I was like, well, I would rather go home. <laughs> 
I was like, at least if I go to Nebraska, I know what I'm going to get. Okay. No, I get that. If I was presented with that, I'd probably be like, yeah, fuck this. Yeah, I'd be like, no, I'm pretty much done with this dog and pony show. Let's go home. <laughs> okay. So you go home. What made you all of a sudden want to go to college? Uh, well, I had the I had the the um, the, um, the GI Bill. GI Bill. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I was a little more mature at this point. You know, I was wasn't as uh, I wasn't as uh, motivated to be out of school. I was like, hey, I can actually go to school for free. You know, I went to community college, got all my general education done, and then kind of went into like a small like trade school kind of thing. And then worked directly with the union to kind of uh, get even more schooling, which was really fun. So, but yeah, I just figured, I was like, well, if I'm going to, I'm like, if I have all this money, all this free money, I may as well use it. <laughs> Be an idiot not to. <laughs> oh my God. Just hearing the way you describe that is, it reminds me of, um, God, who's the guy who played Aquaman? Oh, uh, which one? Um, <laughs> the one recently? Yeah. Oh, Moan? You play Carl Drogo in um, Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, I know you're talking about. I can't remember his name either. Yeah, fuck. But I was watching an interview with him, and they are asking him about working out. He's like, I fucking hate working out. But he's like, if you want to pay me to do it, I'll absolutely do it. <laughs> I saw that. That was a funny interview. I know you're talking but, yeah, it's just like, oh, you want to pay me to go to school? Okay, we'll go. Like, okay, I'll go to school. Like, well, you guys are going to give me 20000 a cement, 20000 a year? Okay, I can sure I can, I can make that. I can swing. <laughs> so what was your time in school like? Pretty pretty fun. I mean, it was a community college, so I stayed at my parents' house. I just went and kind of got my stuff done. And then um, didn't really meet anybody there. Like, just kind of was really casual about it just kind of went and then I worked and then I would yeah my like the four years I went there it was just like pretty much wash rinse repeat like for four years I didn't it wasn't a big school it was really small so it was pretty boring (laughs) what were you doing for work at the time uh just doing HVAC like small stuff like you know change outs um sheet metal work um Air, air conditioning, heating, furnaces, boilers, coolers, stuff like that, refrigeration. That pays that pays pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah. It pays pretty good. It pays <laughs> Okay, based on the smile on your face, I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah. You made good money. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back so, to it one day for sure. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel like that's a skill too that doesn't really like, once you know how to do it, you know how to do it. Yeah. Well, and I did it for 12 years, you know. So, it doesn't just... It's not like, you know, one time you, you learn how to ride a bike, guess what? You can learn how to ride a bike forever. You know, you, you do it once. Yeah, you jump off the bike for a little bit. It's going to take a second to relearn how, you know, all the fun tricks and things you used to do. But you can figure it out pretty quick once you get back on that bike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm... I remember... Because... My fucking heating AC unit's always going out and shit. And I got tired of calling the HVAC guys every time. Because, like, the, the sensor for the pilot light kept going yeah, out. Well, Last time, I was like, dude, I'll pay you on top of the service call fee. Just teach me how to do what you're doing. Just try and fix this shit myself. All you do is clean it up. You just clean it up. Yeah. The cloth. It's the getting it out part that's a fucking pain, dude. Yeah. Fuck that goddamn thing. <laughs> Shit. And it's so funny. They charge for a service call. It's like 250 to come out, clean it up real quick, and oh, in and out. Like, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, quick as money I ever made. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's, it's insane how easy that stuff is once you know how to do it. Right. So, do you feel like the military made you mature faster and, like, taught you discipline and structure and all that stuff? Or how would you say it impacted your life in those regards? Uh, I would say that it did later on in my life. I would say 
coming out of the military at 22, I was still pretty, you know, pretty out there. But I would say as I've gotten older, I find that I find more structure and more, uh, uh, you know, needing to keep a more uh, sectional life like I had in the military. But early on, I think I was just, I mean, when you go into 18 out of 22, you're pretty much the same kid. You're not, <laughs> you're not much different. But now that I'm older, a little more mature, I find that I use a lot of the same structure and tactics. Like I'm up usually around 5 a.m. every day, 5, 5.30, and I'm in bed by, you know, 10. <laughs> I don't stay up late. I don't go out. I don't do much. But no, I, I learned a lot of the structure, and, you know, I, I keep a lot of that stuff, like, very dear to me because uh, staying just inside of that, um, that, uh, that criteria for me, I find is very, very critical for me to like move forward and everything. Yeah. And we'll get into it more later, but I also feel like to the lessons and, and uh, habits that they taught you oh, yeah. definitely are keeping you on the straight and narrow in the adult industry, oh. especially. Oh yeah. It's hard to keep, it's hard to keep on the right path in this industry. There's so many, <laughs> There's so many little routes you can take here and there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's insane. Yeah, it's pretty. I, I just, it, one of my favorite quotes is, you're always one decision away from a completely different life. Seriously. Like, do you ever look back on your life and think like, thank God I went left instead of right, you know, or did this instead of that. Yeah. All the time. I thought I, uh, I had a situation. I thought about, you know, doing what I'm doing right now. If I would have did this probably four years ago, five years ago, I don't know if I, if I'd have the mindset I have right now. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if I would have been ready for this because this is a lot. <laughs> oh yeah. God, fuck. Dude, I was talking about that the other day with my best friend. I was like, Dude, if I got into this in my early 20s, I probably would have been fucked. And not in a good way, like gone down the way wrong path. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into how you ended up in this position. So you go to school, you get your degree, yep. and you got – so your job was just – still doing all the HVAC and AC stuff or did you I was doing more on the control side like the uh the more high-end niche things like the uh it's called VRF variable refrigeration flow it's um it's converting AC voltage to DC voltage uh in a compressor and allowing it to modulate in a frequency that allows for optimal efficiency so that's what I was doing directly <laughs> but um that all just went yeah. right over my head <laughs> It's to a lot of people. It's, it's, um, you ever heard of Mitsu? You ever seen the mini splits? Like the little mini splits that are outside people's houses that, like, you know, ductless air conditioners? Like, um, Mitsubishi, Miss, Mr. Slim Cools, you can buy them at, like, Home Depot. Yeah, I think so. So I did that on an industrial level. I did that on, like, 200, 200 ton systems. But, oh, shit. Yeah, big. And it'd be, like, 70, 80, individual cassettes that would be inside of like an apartment complex or a um uh what else would it be like a campus or a hospital but um yeah so i was doing this work and uh man it just you know COVID happened parts became completely impossible to come by um they're running me like a dog they're like you need to manufacture this i'm like look i'm like i'm not the guys in japan like i can't just slap this part together real quick i'm like can i yeah but you're not paying me to do it and i was like unless you guys pay me some serious cheddar like i'm out and i had already had next door like talking to me like hey would you be interested in this and so it just literally i was just like one day i came into work and i was like look guys here's where i'm at <laughs> like either we figure something out like right now or i'm out <laughs> And they're like, you can't do that. And I, two and a half years later, here I am, not looking back. Oh, okay, so how did Nextdoor even know you existed? Like, there's a bunch of steps we missed in there. Yeah, uh, Instagram. 
they reached out to me on Instagram and said, Hey, I like, Hey, yeah, pretty much. You ever thought about doing this? And it was so weird. Cause I was like, actually I have my whole life. <laughs> really? Yeah. I've always wanted to do this. Who doesn't want to do this as a gay man? What? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure there were points in my life where I was like, oh, that'd be cool to do that for a living, but I never gave much serious thought. I think a lot of the time I was serious about doing something different. Do you know what I mean? And doing something yeah. way off the rails from what I was so accustomed to doing. So I was just like, fuck it. Why not? What's the worst that's going to happen? I don't have anything else to prove. <laughs> I've already been to Afghanistan. I've you know, I've served this country. I'm like, who else do I? I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I can, if I want to go do porn for a while, <laughs> take my time, travel the, travel the world, hey, I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay, so next door was your first. You hadn't done anything prior to that. Ever. So you were just posting on Instagram and they hit you up. Yep. Okay. And so you start thinking to yourself, huh, I wonder if I could do this. Yeah. And then you had all the shit going on at work. And that was just kind of like, you know, maybe I don't have to deal with this bullshit. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Maybe I can do something completely different. You know, it might be a little taboo, but it's 2021 at the time. Or was it 22? Uh, 21. I was like, who really fucking cares? You know, it doesn't really matter as long as you're as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do and paying your taxes, you don't owe Uncle Sam anything. Who cares? <laughs> no. no, I get that. But like so just to be clear, if it wouldn't have been for COVID and all the bullshit and them wanting everything, you would have kept doing that. Oh yeah, totally. Absolutely. I probably would never so you would have never left. Yeah. Well, I mean, I made, I did pretty good for myself. So I, I just didn't think, I, didn't, I never thought I would do anything differently. But it was just so weird because when COVID happened, you know, it just, everything went full circle. And I'm just like, is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Am I just going to be married to this, this one thing and this one thing only? Or am I going to have anything else that I can do? So it was kind of funny. I was like, you know, like, well, I, I guess I can give this a shot, see what happens. And holy shit, that was those first six months. Whew, that was hard. That was hard trying to, you know, keep afloat, building a brand, you know, traveling. It was that. Fuck, I'll tell you, that shit was hard. <laughs> but I did it. <laughs> yeah. So that was, in fact, going to be my next question is. Generally speaking, when someone gets into porn, you know, they'll have a day job right here and then they'll have porn here and they kind of use it to overlap and they don't quit the day job until the porn can completely sustain them. It doesn't sound like that was the case with you. It was just, hey, we'll go in the deep end of the pool. Like, how do you make that work? Uh, I did some things on the side for some money. <laughs> I don't know if I can actively say them because it's yeah. If you're talking about escorting, you can say I, that. That's fine. I escorted pretty hard, and I had a couple guys that would help me out here and there. So I was like, and I'm I'm pretty frugal. I'm not a I'm not a very I I know where what needs to get paid and how it needs to get paid and paying up front and all that stuff. So it wasn't you know I'd pay two months of rent. And be like, okay, I got to work hard these next two months so I don't have to worry about these next two months. So it was, it was when I, when I make a decision, it's go or don't go. So I made 100% commitment. I'm like, I'm going to make this work because I don't want to have to go back to this working 90 hours a week for these guys unless I absolutely have to. Yeah. No, I get that. <laughs> so. Next door, and you're an exclusive with them, right? Yes, yes, sir. When did that happen? Before I even stepped on set, they're like, "We want you to 
you know, if you feel comfortable doing an exclusive contract, I was like, they're like, yeah, we'll give you this many scenes, this, this, that. They, uh, they called it a developmental contract. So it was really cool. So I, uh, yeah, before I even stepped on set, I was actually already assigned exclusive. So a lot of risk on their end too. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I did, you gotta give me a sec. I'm just that. Fuck that. Hell no. That just seems like a shitload of risk on their end and on your end. I was gonna make it work because I'm just telling you, like, oh yeah, I've worked for some studios that are like super chill, super easy to work for. You know, it's mm-hmm. like amazing. Yeah. And then I've worked with other studios where I'm like, fuck this. For you to sign that without having worked with them, and especially for them, like, <laughs> how do they know you can perform? Like, how they... Out, what the fuck, dude? I've never heard of that before. Shit. <laughs> I just... Yeah, before I even stepped foot on, I was already signed. They're like, developmental contract. Here's, you know, we'll do a six-month thing, and after that, we'll reevaluate. And it it was for me, like I said, once I was like, I'm gonna do this, I was like, I don't give a shit. I'm going back to what I did. I didn't have good terms. So <laughs> and I really didn't want to go back to doing that kind of work. So I was literally like, fuck it. Whatever I have to do to make this work, I'm gonna make it work. And if I have to you know, escort harder than I've ever wanted to in my entire life, then sure. Just so I don't have to go back to that nine to five, I'll make it work. Damn. You're like living embodiment of burning the ships. What the fuck? Of what? Burning the ships. (laughs) What's that mean? So I believe it was Cortez who did it, but when he sailed over here, from Spain to motivate his men because, you know, he didn't want his men to think that going back or surrendering was an option. So as soon as they landed over here, he literally burned all the fucking ships. And the idea was to motivate the shit out of the men. It was like, we're either going to succeed or we're going to die. That's it. Those are the only two options. (laughs) Yeah, that's my, that's me. I just, I want to go back and I you know I had done it since I was I missed so many you know I mean at my age I hadn't really ever experienced anything living in Nebraska you know with going out having fun you know being gay and I was like fuck this shit you know they they get on my ass about taking a week off and I worked there for or a couple of days and I worked there for 10 years and I'm like I'm like this is stupid I'm like I'm not gonna do this for the rest of my life you know, and where I'm from, people get that one job and they stay there for their whole life. And I'm like, uh-uh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, what, I'm curious, going back in time, what was coming out like for you? Because you don't look gay, you don't talk gay, you don't dress gay. Like I lost you. Are you there? Uh Oh yeah, I'm here. I lost you for a second there. Um, okay. Actually, it was kind of funny. Uh, so my family always was always uh, very accepting. My grandma was a teacher. My grandpa was a firefighter. So it was all about acceptance in my family and understanding. Um, it was funny when I came out to my mom, uh, she was like, "I have to tell you guys," and I was like, "Oh my god, you guys are pregnant!" And I'm like, "Oh." Uh, no, I'm gay. <laughs> I was 24. And they're like, what? You're gay? Like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, hey, I've done the test. So I, I'm pretty sure. Like, I've, I've run the, I've run this, I've run the statistics. I'm pretty sure. I know I'm, I know I'm gay. <laughs> but it was, everybody in the family was super cool. Nobody cared. I mean, I, I don't, nobody, nobody's ever said anything like, oh, whatever. It's just, they're just like, oh, it's just Mike. Yeah, whatever. Or Blaine. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, that's a common enough name that, yeah. Yeah. But, okay, so it wasn't a big deal at all. No, 
not at all. My family, they were they were just more like, well, it kind of makes sense now. You never had a girlfriend. You always brought guys around. They're like, well, they're like, how did we not put two and two together? I'm like, I don't know. I was like, you guys were my parents. You're supposed to know me better than anybody. But they're like, yeah, but you like football. You like UFC. You like beer. They're like, what of those things, you know, it's hard to, they're like, how are you, what? You're gay, but you like all those things? I'm like, sure, why not? Can't I like men and like manly things? Yeah. Oh, my God. That is so true, though. And I've done several, like, YouTube monologue videos on that. Like, you know, how to be gay or whatever. Because a lot of people have this idea in their head that, like, oh, if you're gay, you have to watch RuPaul's Drag Race and love Madonna and wear rainbow shirts. And it's like, no, like, there are plenty of gay masculine men that, like you said, love the UFC and love football and love mudding and, like, all, you know, shoot guns and all kinds of crazy shit, you know. Take a a 10-inch dick, like, no problem, but that's because I'm gay. But I also love football. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I think that's amazing. So it's never been a big deal your entire life. No, not really. And I always knew when I was young, I was like, oh, I'm gay. I was like, I'm gay. <laughs> but how do you know when you were young? <laughs> when I was 12, I remember telling my mom, I want to be an underwear model when I grew up. And like, oh, yeah, that's cute. Go for what you want to do. Super embracing, you know, like, yeah, do whatever you want. <laughs> So it was like the Sears or JC Penny underwear catalog. That's when you realized. Yeah, like the uh, we would go to. I think yeah, was it Sears? I think yeah, with all the men or the Calvin Kleins. Yeah, like the Calvin. Yeah. The Calvin Kleins. I'd be like, that's what I want to do, Mom. And she'd be like, oh sure, honey. Yeah, whatever. You do whatever. So you're happy. <laughs> No, I just, I, I think that's amazing, though, that you had such, like, a supportive family. And I've always believed that being gay, unless you've got, like, some ultra fucking neoconservative redneck fucking hillbilly. I'm not talking conservative as far as political, but, like, yeah, I know you're you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking just, oh, no. Yeah, I've got some yeah. future in-laws like that right now, and it fucking sucks. Yeah, nobody, it's super weird. I'm very grateful for my family. Like, very, nobody in my family has any for me or my fiance. There's no animosity. Everybody's very accepting. I'm not saying it's that way with everybody. I wish it was, yeah. which would be way fucking cooler. But my family is just, they're just very accepting and very open. And I'm very lucky to have such an awesome family, to be honest. Wow. That's amazing, dude. Good for you. you. So you mentioned a fiance. How did you guys meet? So we actually met. I was actually working down here in Austin, Texas for Splash Weekend. And um, what's that? uh, Splash Weekend's like a little, um, they they go out to Lake Travis. it's like a, a gay pride kind of gathering. They do it at the end of September. But uh, oh. I was working at a dance club by the name of Oil uh, Oil Can Harry's or Henry's or something. And um, I was actually a go-go dancer. So I ran into my, my then-to-be fiancé there that night. And it was really fun because he was dressed. I can't remember what he, he was wearing, like a, a morph, like a Deadpool morph suit. And... Um, he has these really vibrant white teeth. So, um, and I, my mom was a dentist. So I picked him from a, like, you know, from way. I was like, Oh, look at that man's teeth. He's, you know, he takes care. So I walk over there and talk to him and he says, Oh, I don't talk to strippers. And I'm like, Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Like you're going to play hard to get. I'm like, okay, (laughs) I'm in for it. (laughs) So, you know, I, make a couple of rounds. I come back, get him a drink. You know, we exchange numbers and then, um, I don't hear from him all night. And then, um, I go to leave the, the bar and we actually, we run into each other. Like he's actually outside of the bar and I'm leaving the bar and we actually 
bumped into each other. And then, yeah, we went and go have a, he took me to a, a, Latin, dan- a Latin dance club, and we stayed there till like, 5 a.m. dancing, and then we went to his place. It was actually pretty cool. Yeah. And then um, we just kept in contact, and then uh, things kind of progressed. You know, we've been together two and a half years now, got engaged at year two, so. Shit. Yeah. Okay. So, were you doing porn when you met him? Yes. Okay, so you were doing porn. Everything. Damn, what? <sighs> Walk me through how, like, what made you pursue it further? Because for me personally, if I went up to you and approached you and you said something like that, I would disengage. I would be like, nope, <clears throat> I'd move on. Uh- what made you, like, the hard to get part. <laughs> really? Oh, it's a huge turn on. Oh yeah. When someone plays hard to get, it's like, okay, challenge accepted. Here we go. You know, I love, I love, you don't want them all to be easy. Oh, that's no fun. I don't know. I, I like a challenge. Okay. Fair enough. Challenges are fun. And then, uh, yeah, but no, he's he's great. He's he's also a nurse. I didn't know that until obviously we had gotten to know each other a little bit more. And I'm like, oh wow, okay. And uh, nah, it's just after that, it just everything kind of clicked and just fell into place. It was just like I think we were meant to know each other for quite some time. You know, it's, let's 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 see how we do. <laughs> so, how does he feel about your job? Um, he's very supportive. Obviously, some days are better than others. You know, with um, I don't. Mean- there's a lot of travel. There's a lot of travel incorporated with what I do. Like, um, I think I'm leaving actually tomorrow for about 12 days. So I've got to go up to Omaha and then I go to California and then I go out to, you know, New York. And it's just, you know, that's, that's probably the most stressful part is just travel itself. You know, just being away, you know, from someone you genuinely care about, want to spend time with, you know, but also the same sense, he's got family here. You know, he can, he's got friends he can hang out with, but you know, it it does, it does suck when there's somebody you want to be with at night and then you're sleeping in a hotel room by yourself. (laughs) Yeah. No, I get that. It's, I'm definitely on the same page as you. That's probably the biggest reason I hate traveling because I love being at home. I love being with my fiance. I love, it's like, you're not paying me to do whatever it is you're paying me to do. You're paying me to be away from home. Yeah. Because, yeah, I I totally get that. I mean, so refreshing. The section. You know what I mean? You can cook. You can spend time together. You know, you can watch movies. You know, when you're on the road, you're just FaceTiming. And, you know, it's nice to see somebody here and there. But it's just better to be there in person, especially in your own home. You know, there's just nothing beats that. Yeah, no, you got your house. You got, like you said, your food. You've got your gym, your routine. You wake up with them in the morning. You go to sleep with them at night. You've got your couch, your everything. Like, fuck being away from home. (laughs) I want to pump the brakes on a lot of it. But, you know, the, the problem is, is... When business is good, you kind of just got to ride the wave, which sucks. Yeah. So, but it's, I'd rather, it, I'm not going to complain. No complaints. I'm just going to be grateful. Yeah. <laughs> so the sexual part, that's not an issue at all. No, never had a problem with that. Shit. <laughs> okay. Now he, he's my, I, he's, he turns me on so much, and as soon as I'm home, I'm like, get your fucking pants off. <laughs> I'm like, get in. I'm like, I'm on my way from the airport. Get ready. <laughs> yep. No, I'm, I'm the exact same way. So I understand. Um, how does he feel, though, about... Because I'm sure, like people recognize you in public or come up to you and how does he handle that? Uh, he, he actually is very, what's the word? Um, prideful about it. He's like, yeah, that's my fucking partner. 
He's like, yeah, don't you wish you had him? <laughs> Sorry, he's mine. Okay. No, he takes it. He takes it. I mean, some days are harder than others, obviously. You know, not, not everybody's going to come across, you know, politely. You know, a lot of people are, yeah. you know, some people are very, they, uh, they come along with malice, you know, hatred and other things. I feel like I can't believe you date somebody like that. It's like, well, you know, I'm not really a bad guy if you get to know me, but you want to put these preconceived notions of who I am, which isn't really fair, you know, or judge him for dating me. And it's like, come on, guys, like. You know, you don't know me. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because that's actually what inspired me to do this series is because I was on the dating apps and I got so fed up with this shit that as soon as people hear the term porn star, it's like, oh, drug addict, alcoholic, drink. They're going to come up with 20 assumptions, yeah. none of which are positive at all. Yeah. And it's like, no, dude, like we're fucking real people. And yeah. a lot of the times more fucking normal than have the people watching. Yeah. You know, it's like, <laughs> fuck. No, I mean, I'm just a, I'm just an average guy. Literally, I'm just an average person who just one day decided to say, fuck it. Go for something completely different. Work out really hard, um, you know apply all of my hard work that I've grown up with my whole life, apply it to what I do right now and just kind of see where it goes. There's, I'm no different than anybody else. I just decided to make a decision that's a little bit taboo and that a lot of people don't feel comfortable doing. Um, are you open about what you do? Like, let's say you're working out at the gym and some guy comes up to you and is like, Oh, Hey, I, I see you working out all the time. I'm so-and-so. What do you do for a living? Uh, I just tell them I do modeling and then only fans. And if they oh. they're like, Oh really? I'd like, yeah, you know, here's my Twitter. They're like, Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> I see. You. I see your first pin tweet. Wow. That's, that's quite impressive. <laughs> and for your boy, or your fiance, like, how is his whole family? Oh, with... They don't care. They're very accepting, which is really crazy because they're uh, they're Hispanic, and I believe the religion is like Roman Catholic, which is pretty, oh. pretty hardcore. None of them care because I make him happy. Wow! Literally, it's it's the craziest thing. None of them care because I make him happy. If only more people thought like that, right? Wouldn't it just be, wouldn't it just be crazy if people thought that like, oh my God, he makes him happy. Maybe we should be happy for him. God forbid. <laughs> yeah. That's no. And, and it, that just speaks to their character because I'm very familiar with like Latin culture, especially like Roman Catholic, like, oh yeah. That's one of the last people on the planet I'd expect to. Just, oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Come marry our son. Well, before I before I met him, he was single for nine years. Nobody made him happy, so I was the first person that came along in nine years that made him comfortable to be himself, made him happy, and provided not like provided, but gave him comfort and let him feel like himself, and made him comfortable and made him feel loved again do you know what i mean and i was the first person to do that nine years is a long ass fucking time nine years single it's a long time <laughs> i don't think i could do that I, fuck that i sure as hell could <laughs> jesus hell no <laughs> okay so when did you first make your only fans because you did next door first right Mm hmm. Yeah. So I and what did like fans just mention it to you or, or no? I made it around. The, I made it around the same time. <clears throat> I mean, I had had one, but literally, just <laughs> I didn't even have a Twitter when when um, Next Door hit me up. They're like, you need to make a Twitter, and they're like, well, we should also. They're like, people are like, well, now you have a Twitter, you should make an OnlyFans, and I'm like, I'm like, isn't that that one thing? Because I was so in touch with reality. <laughs> they're like you can make money I'm like oh money 
Okay. <laughs> oh, more money? <laughs> so, yeah, probably around, I literally think it's probably about two years old. It's not that old. Oh, shit. Yeah. Maybe okay. over two and a half. And do you start collabing right away, or were you just doing solo stuff? Uh, I did solo stuff pretty much immediately. And then um, one of my first collabs was Chris Damned, which was actually pretty fun. So, okay. yeah, I actually that was I like that was like the one that like like breaking up the ice for me, which was really fun. <laughs> okay, damn. And would you have ever thought, you know, four or five years ago, that it would have that you'd be doing this and that it would have turned into this when you started? Like, do you think it could become this? Uh, I think with who I am as a person with like, just kind of giving it 110%, I figure, I feel like this still would have happened. It's just, if COVID never would have happened, I'd never be here today. Yeah. Cause I know I, I, when I do something, I do it a hundred percent. Like I don't ever, I don't, there is no 85, 90 it's, go that's just how it's always been so i think even you know to what your question was like four or five years ago i i still think i'd be in the same position maybe maybe a little bit maybe it would have taken me maybe i wouldn't have mentally been there as much as i am now but i think i think i'd still be in the same position yeah and i'm glad you brought up covid because I don't want to uh, make light of any oh, no, it's bad or negative things that happened during it. But I don't feel like a lot of people truly appreciate the good things that came out of it as well. Yeah. Like a lot of people change their careers. Like I know for me personally, I used to go out to eat all the time. Now I like never go out to eat because I realized I didn't need that to be happy. Yeah. Or like I'm in grad school now, so now all the classes are like sync or eight synchronous, so you can take them online or yeah. in person. That shit didn't exist before. Like, did how did COVID affect your life in other? Like, how did it change it in a positive, other important? Well, things that I I would see, for example, was you know we were just frivolously throwing money away into these buildings. Cause I was like, I would maintain these buildings. I would go out there and maintain these skyscrapers that nobody was inside of. And I'm like, yeah. they're just throwing money away. And it's just, it's so crazy to me that, that this whole time people could have been working from home. And I'm like, yeah. in my head, it just blew my mind. I'm like the efficiencies that we could have all the money, all the energy, everything we could have saved over the course yeah. of, all these years without destroying land and putting up these eyesores of buildings, we could have did so much more, you know, it's just, it's crazy to me, but there's so many pot. I got super close with my family during COVID cause we spent a lot of time together. I got really close with my grandparents, you know, that was always awesome. That's, you know, time I'll never, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. I mean, but there's so many positives from COVID. Obviously there's a lot of negatives. Don't get me wrong, but you know, I got to really figure myself out during COVID, which I, if COVID would have never happened, like I, like I said, I wouldn't be here. I would be probably still in, in my job, miserable, you know, maybe not, miserable, but I would be like, what if I would have did that? What if I would have just pulled the trigger and did that? Instead of like, and now I don't have that. What if, cause I fucking did it. <laughs> There is no what if. I did it. <laughs> so how has porn affected your life, positively and negatively? Positively. Oh, my God. So many things. I've I've traveled so much in these past two and a half years. I've got to do things that I never would have I never would have expected I would get to do. I got to go to Alaska, Maine, Mexico, like the, the Mayan temples. Um, you know, the Palace of Beautiful Arts. I've, I've been to so many art exhibits, like, all over the United States, like the Met, the um, in Chicago, the Cleveland Art Museum, um, Miami's, um, now where was I? 
oh, I went to the ballet and like, you know, all these just super cool things. I would have never gotten to do that because I lived in Nebraska. You know, I've never been able to experience this culture, this, you know, this kind of lifestyle that, you know, other people take for granted that live in big cities. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, cool, whatever. You know, we're going to go to this art exhibit. Well, we don't have art exhibits where I'm from. <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> we have. We have the county fair. <laughs> and Cornhusker games. We got bull riding and Cornhusker games, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I like that shit. But it's different. <laughs> yeah. It's a little bit different, especially when you have a little bit of, you know, when you've seen a little bit of the world and you're like, I want to see more of it, you know? Yeah. So for porn, that was huge for me. It was getting to see all this really cool shit all over the place, like, I would have never been able to go to any of these places if, if I had this regular nine to five, never, yeah. ever would have never happened. Yeah. So you were living in Nebraska when next door first hit you up, right? When did you move to Austin? I'm assuming to move in with your fiance. Probably about, about a year ago, year, a little bit over a year ago, not much longer. So I would actually, I would actually drive back and forth between Austin and, and Omaha because I actually had a place in Omaha. Uh, oh. Drive back and forth between the two, just so I could see my family. And it'd be funny; they'd be like, "How do you always have so much time off?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I just take it a little break. <laughs> oh, so you didn't tell them you were doing porn. Uh -huh. Do they know now? Yeah, they know now. <laughs> How did that come about? <laughs> they were like, okay, we know something's going on here. Why? How are you always in Mexico? How did you go to how did you go to Canada? How do you afford this? I'm like, well <laughs> they're like they thought that my fiance was my sugar daddy, and I'm like, we're not gonna have we're not gonna have that be the idea. <laughs> So I was like, no, this is what's going on. And what'd they say? They're like, all right, we'll just not talk about it, but we still love you. <laughs> <laughs> They've always kind of, I've always, I've always kind of been like a free spirit in the family and everybody's just kind of always just do. And they don't really care. It's, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure quietly there's some things that are said, but. You know, nobody ever says anything to me and everyone seems happy. So I just kind of move on. <laughs> and as long as okay. Beyonce and I are happy, yeah, that's all that really matters. Yeah. No, I think I, I like that. I like your fiance's parents' perspective. You know, as long as you make him happy, we really don't give a shit. Right. I, I think that summarizes it perfectly. And there's a lot of parents who need to feel that way, but don't. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. So, porn experiences. Is there anything you've ever done on camera that you hadn't done previously, and you do it, and you're like, oh, shit, I really like this? Uh, so, before I, before I did a lot of the porn, I didn't bottom a lot. Like, rarely ever. I rarely ever bought them. I think I only bought them like three or four times in my entire life. And so this is really funny. I have a tattoo on my ass that says your name. And, and I got that when I was 17 because you, you ever seen the show Jackass? Like, yeah. yeah Steve-O, he had a tattoo that said your name on his ass. And I'm like, that's really funny. So I, I said to all my friends, I'm like, I'm going to do that. So I did it. So when the studio saw that tattoo, they're like, hey, how do you feel about bottoming? I'm like, I don't know. Sure, why not? So I actually don't, I actually like it. <laughs> and I've now I've done, you know, I've taken some pretty big ticks and I've been DP'd uh, multiple times on studio sets, which is really funny because I would have never thought that <laughs> my whole could have did that. <laughs> But holy shit. I would have never thought. It's just like whatever. Put it to the limit. Let's see what happens. What the fuck? 
Damn, dude. Okay, I'm... Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, Hell no. You know, they asked me, they're like, how do you feel about it? I'm like, well, I'll give it a shot. I'll try anything once. Well, I mean, most things. Not a lot of things, but I'll try... I'll try a lot of things once, but I was like, yeah, whatever. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it's not that bad once you get adjusted. I... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just speechless because I'm on the very, very, very thick side. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not uncommon for guys to struggle just to take me. So I'm just like, DP, uh, how do you loosen up for that? Um, For me, I kind of just take the time, just like kind of breathe. It's very, it's like a very, um, I just take it nice and easy. Like, just don't like, just please, like when I, I'll tell them like, just take it nice and easy. Let's not, let's not try to break me. You know, let's just try to, you know, once I'm, once I'm good, I'm good. Like, it's fine. But it's that initial, it probably takes, I mean, I, I usually get ready for about 20, 30 minutes. You know, I'll put a pretty big, like, I had the uh, Morocco steel build, though. I had that. That's what I was getting ready with. Yeah, if I'm if I'm not ready after that, then um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know what else, what else to do. <laughs> so... I mean, hell, that's quite a first to do. Have you ever done that in your private life or just on camera? Just for camera. Outside of that, no, not really. Like, I tried uh -huh. around with it a little bit here and there, you know, with, like, dildos and stuff like that. But it was always too uncomfortable. And then I learned, like, they're like, well, you know, hey, if you want to, like, you know, if you want to have it be more comfortable. And, like, you know, talking to a lot of the guys in the industry, you know, about bottoming, they're like, like, yeah, man, it's probably really uncomfortable because you're not familiar with it or you don't know how to relax. So, you know, a lot of them would teach me or like, you know, like not like coach me, but say, well, try this, you know, you know, um, loosen up this way, you know, breathe, you know, push out, stuff like that uh, to try to loosen up. And I'm like, huh. I'm like, that actually like that actually works. <laughs> okay. What are some of the best tips you've gotten? Like bottoming 101 with Blaine O'Connor. Arch that back. <laughs> Arch that back. Um, when don't ever clinch. Just just relax. Yes. Thank you. Just relax. It's it feels so much better when you just let it sink in and then just let your hole just kind of open wide up. You know, you don't need pop. You know, people sometimes use poppers, whatever. I've never used them. But just relax. Let it sink in. Arch that back. And then let it just fall into place. Everything else inside will just kind of move around. <laughs> but just open up. Just open up. Relax. Take a nice deep breath. And also, if, you're, if your top knows how to top, that's also a big thing with it, too. You know, if, you, if you're with a guy who just wants to destroy you, it's probably not going to be pleasant, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying that we all don't sometimes like that. Sometimes it's kind of fun. But so sometimes it's like, you know what? I don't really know if I want that to be today. Yeah. So just relax. Take it easy. <laughs> yeah, no. I think the biggest things is, like you said, the breathing and just mm -hmm. relaxing. Because if you try to fight it yeah. and, like, clenching – it when someone clenches from a, the top's point of view, that shit is painful. Like it feels yeah. like my goddamn dick is in a vice grip. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. That is not comfortable for for either person. <laughs> Trust me, because initially when I was bottoming for this one guy out of New York, he has a really big dick, and he's like, he's like, trust me. Just let it sink in and don't clench because it hurts me. <laughs> and I was like, well, as long as we're both, as long as we're both being hurt, I'll just listen to you so at least neither of us gets hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing too, though, that I think is seriously underrated 
is you have to trust the top in order to be able to do that yeah. stuff. Because if you don't trust the top to go dead slow, mm -hmm. you're going to clinch. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just, you know, because if you're just sitting there fearing that he's going to do that, oh, hell no. Right. It's just, fuck that. No, it's a, it's a, it's a mutual, like, yeah, a trust. If you don't trust them, how are you going to relax? You know, yeah. I'm in your body. So you have to, you have to be able to relax to some extent, you know? Um, and sometimes, you know, those big dicks, it takes a second to relax, but man, once you're good, whew, it's like some, it's, I've had a couple of guys who made me come hands free and I've never done that before. And I'm like, wow, that's Ooh. pretty nice. <laughs> uh, so when, so you first start, well, you say you bought him a few times, but you start really bottoming on camera. Mm -hmm. Did that affect your private life? Yeah, not as well. Kind of. Everyone thinks I'm just a big old power, voracious power bottom, and it's like, nah, not really. <laughs> it's like okay, so no cameras rolling. What do you like prefer, like top, in your private life? Top, very top, yeah. I mean, my... Like 90, 10, 80, 20? 90, what? 10. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I In my personal life, I, I'm I top. I mean, it's just just what I like. Well, and then I think the thing is, like, let's let's not skew these. I, I bottom so much already that bottoming for me has become like work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Pleasurable. So it's a lot of work for me to get like ready. I'm like, and when I, and as soon as I like start getting ready to bottom, I immediately start thinking of, Oh, here comes work. Do you know what I mean? And it's not pleasurable. So now like for me, like topping in which has always been pleasurable, it's just, it's still as pleasurable. And my, my partner, he doesn't like to top at all. So oh. I'm, kind of, I'm just like, Hey, perfect. <laughs> But no, the thing is, if, you know, I mean, there's, I think, recently, in like the past six months, I don't think I've even bottomed once outside of work and studio stuff. Uh -huh. All right. So, any crazy stories from band content studios, anything that really sticks out where you're just like, oh, my God. Uh, yeah. So my very first, so this will be, this is even more fun for my first scene. So my very first scene ever was a four way. So next door, I talked to them later about it. They're like, yeah, we wanted to throw you in the fire to see how you would react. Cause they're like, we had a lot of high expectations for you. And I was like, well, I'm glad you guys did. So the very first scene I ever did was a four way. And at the very end, everybody comes in my face and we all snowball to come. Oh, shit. My very first scene ever. <laughs> it's called a four way fuck fest. Jesus. <laughs> and they just threw me to the wolves. They're like, best of luck, kid. Oh, and the best part was I was the oldest person there. <laughs> everybody thought I was like mid 20s. I'm like, uh uh. <laughs> Wow. Talk about trial by fire, literally. Right? Yeah. It was Jesus. Cool, it was, you know what? That's how, after that day, I was like, oh, I can do this. Oh, I can do this, no problem. <laughs> okay. So, any particular favorite fans or, like, fan content scene you've done? Uh, so, I always love doing uh, fan content like OnlyFans. Yeah. Oh, I always love working with Chris. Chris Dand is such a sweetheart. And then my uh, my friend in New York, Eric Hall. He's just got such a beautiful dick. So they're both they're both crowd favorites for me. I've got one on the East Coast, and I got one on the West Coast. <laughs> How many times have you shot with them? Uh, I've shot with Chris, I think four or five times, and I've shot with Eric about four or five times too. Okay. Yeah, no, if you have someone with good chemistry, that never gets old. No. And you can see it on camera too, which is which yeah. that much better. Cause when you're making content, sometimes, you know, it's you know, I get you gotta make content, 
But, you know, sometimes it's fun to have sex with people you want to have sex with. Yeah. You know, and it makes it easier because it's not forced. There's no, there's no forced baloney. It's, it's like, hey, this is actually like, we are actually fucking and having fun. (laughs) Okay. So I've never asked this to anyone before. I don't know why. Do you have any, uh, what do I want to say? Cues that you didn't realize that you had prior to doing porn. Like myself as an example, I never realized it, but when I'm super, super turned on, like my toes curl, I had no fucking idea until my editor, who is one of my exes at the time, is like, you realize you curl your toes, right? I'm like, no. Like, go watch the footage. I'm like, holy shit. Uh, I realized, this is one thing I did realize that uh, a lot of my studio work, you'll see, uh, I never really liked, so I I liked it, but I never really did it a lot. Fingering. I love getting fingered. Really? I never would have guessed that. But if you see a lot of my studio stuff, when I bought it, I'm probably getting fingered to come. And, and it. I had never, I had never done it ever in my entire life until I started doing that. And someone brought it up to me and they're like, they're like, yeah, you should try it sometime. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm like, this is You're talking about one, two, three, two fingers. That's it. Okay. Two, maybe three if I'm feeling really froggy, but no more outside. I'm not going any further than that. But no, I never. Okay. Never until I started doing studio work was I ever like, oh, wow, okay. Like, because someone's like, oh, yeah, you should try this prostate massage thing. Someone did it to me. And I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck? We're talking like this. Yeah, like that. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is spectacular. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So it's like, well, whatever. But, yeah, so it's like, well, because, like, I never really bottomed before. And it was never comfortable. So once people, like, once I started to get, like, a sexual identity and learn about like my body itself is when I was like, uh, now I'm fully like in tuned with everything in my body. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is so empowering. (laughs) I know my body so well now. (laughs) Wow. No, that. Okay. Anything else you discovered that you liked, you didn't know or hadn't tried? Hmm. Uh, bondage. I never really got into that, but I don't mind being tied up here and there. It's kind of hot. Yeah. It's kind of uh-huh. cool. Have you ever done it in your private life or just on camera? Uh, only in my private life, but oh, I've never done it before. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is kind of hot. Like the mystery of the blindfold and being kind of like, you know, what's it called? Uh, like not... Like, not, like, uh, submitted, but, like, you're kind of at the the whim of the other person, more than less. Yeah. Like, you're kind of in their control. And it's like, oh, that's kind of hot. <laughs> Are you doing this with your fiancé? Yeah, like, I'll, I'll be, like, I'll be the top, but he'll just kind of, like, have that power over me. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, like a, like a reverse roll switch kind of thing. Yeah. No, it's like, you're in control all day long you're playing like these roles and you're finally just like fuck i don't even care just yeah do whatever you want (laughs) right exactly okay (laughs) so i assist everyone favorite two positions you can only do these two for the rest of your life so you gotta pick two absolute best what would they be and why Topping or bottoming? Both. So one answer for each. Uh, doggy. Doggy for top. And then, um, well, actually, let me flip that. Doggy for bottoming. I love, I love doggy. And, like, I love to bottom while I'm, while I'm doggy just because it, it just, you can feel it so deep inside, you know, and if, especially if the top is, like, knows how to top. Like, you can just feel it so much better and it just hits everything inside of your you know cavity so well and then uh, um missionary but topping because i love being able to kiss like you know i want to be able to see them and 
you know, and stroke their dick while I'm fucking them. <laughs> and just, you had me worried for a second there. No, no, I was going to come back. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, the reason why you had me worried is because, like, every single person I've ever interviewed has said missionary. Really? Every single one. The only exception was King Dwarf, but that's just because of the size logistics of it. Sure. Oh, but yeah, no, I just, yeah, you, you did not disappoint. I was like, don't be the one to break this cycle, dude. No, no, no. Mi- missionary's a must. You have to. Like, that, there's just nothing sexier than seeing your man and, like, you know, he's just right there and you're just fucking him and, you know, go down there and kiss him and then come back up and keep fucking him. You just can't. You can't beat that. <laughs> yeah, no. Best position, hands down. Best position, hands down. Can't beat it. So, what does your life look like outside of all this? Like, what do you like to do for fun? What What's your typical, let's say you're with your fiance, it's Saturday, you ain't got shit to do. What are you guys doing? Uh, it depends on the time of the year. Uh, like, right now it's way too fucking hot to do um but generally yeah we'd go to the lake go hang out um go to the gym in the morning relax come home cook breakfast um some days he'll go hang out with his family i'll stay home and play video games with my friends like call of duty or or madden and then a football season's coming up so i will be mia for the next three months He made it. He's made it through two. He's made it through two football seasons. So I know he's the one. <laughs> yeah. No, I was gonna say you and I have that in common, but I'm sure you can tell by my background. I'm like, yeah, no football season yeah. is, yeah. Like I don't schedule shoots or yeah. anything. Who's your favorite NFL team? Carolina Panthers. I think it's going to be a bad year. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that Bryce, that Bryce Young, he's just too. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm not going to put the, I'm not going to say too much because I really want him to do good. But man, you don't realize he's the same size I am. He is the same size as me, but 15 pounds heavier. That's not big. It's not a very. Yeah. Not a big person. Yep. I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. <sighs> so, would I assume you're catching every game then? Uh, I'm going to try. I don't know. If it starts to turn south, then <laughs> I'll probably just turn it off. <laughs> okay. But you guys, it's not like you have a pretty simple life then. Yeah, pretty chill. There's... I mean, we don't really, we travel a lot. We try to take a lot of vacations. Um, not a lot. I mean, we try to take a vacation once a month, go somewhere, go to Mexico. Once a month? That's fucking lot, dude. Is it? That's like 12 times as many as the average person. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to base, base it off of because I travel. Okay, that's not normal in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I guess we just try to take a little time off here and there. and But outside of that, I mean, we don't really, the thing is, is we don't really do raves. We don't do the parties. We don't do the circuits. So we don't spend all that money. So we just kind of, we just kind of go on little trips here and there. You know, uh, Ma- uh, Monterey is six hours away driving. So we'll drive down there for a long weekend and just, you know, it's super cheap down in Mexico. So, you know, or we'll go up to Dallas and we'll just go up there and stay in a hotel or stay with some friends. But yeah, we don't, we just don't do much. We, I mean, it's, we do what we want to do, but you know, we find that we just, we're kind of homebodies. We don't really go out. We kind of just relax and we have a, you know, a decent house. So we just have people come over relax with us like you know hey come over we'll cook you know i cook on the grill i'll make custom burgers and we'll just drink beer listen to music and stay up until who knows however late and everyone can just hang out here (laughs) 
You and I are very, very similar. I am. I like. I like the way my life is. I like. I like the just the very chill. <laughs> I don't like to go out and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I talked like really in depth about this with Jack Dixon. We actually did a whole episode about it. But do you ever have you ever felt like kind of an outsider, if you will, in the gay community because you don't like going to bars and clubs and circuit parties and all this and that. Yeah. Sometimes I, I feel, but also the same things is, you know, they don't want to come to my stuff. So do they feel like an outsider to me? What I mean? So, yeah. but also the same thing is, is they might not enjoy what I enjoy. And I've never really, I just never had a, I've never, I just never thought about going to parties like that. I've tried it. Don't get me wrong. I've, I've gone to plenty. It's just not my thing. I just, I'd rather, I'd rather go to a football game. I'd rather stay home and, you know, have some beers and cook burgers. So I think that sometimes I do feel like I'm a little bit of an outsider, but sometimes I feel like, you know, I wonder if they feel the same way about me. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel like, though, your personality type of just preferring this will definitely help you in this industry. Because so many guys get into this industry and they get into the nightlife and they get, they go off the beaten path and oh, yeah. they get into a very self-destructive, you know, it just, I, I've seen this industry chew up way too many people and just right. spit them right back out. Well, coming out of the military, I was pretty, I had a little bit of, you know, my issues coming out of there, you know, with like PTSD and stuff like that. So I've already dealt with those, like those things, and I like them to stay way the fuck over there, <laughs> as far away from me as possible. <laughs> yeah. And I know for me, going to those kind of parties and stuff like that leads me down a road that I don't really that I'm not really a big fan of. So for me, I just kind of like to keep it how it is. You know, I know what works and I know what I like to do. So, yeah. and if I'm a little boring, Hey, fuck it. I might be boring. It's okay. I don't mind being boring. I like Dude, there's nothing wrong with being boring. I love boring. I love being boring. Sometimes my, sometimes my fiance is like, let's go out and do something. I'm like, but we have all this fun stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point in going out? We go out though. We do. We're still young. We go out, but it's like once, once every two months. But also, mind you, it's 170 degrees in Texas. It's it's way too hot to go out in general <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have animals or no? No. No. I wish we did. I wish we had a dog or something or a cat, but it's just. I'm never here and he's a nurse. So the, the animal would be, you know, kind of at the liberty of somebody else taking care of it. And we don't think that's responsible or fair to the creature. So does he, I'm guessing he does three 12 hour shifts a week then? Yeah. Three, three twelves and then uh, some home health on the side. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. He's very busy. Yeah. That would be hard. So, favorite places you've traveled? Ooh. Oh, uh, I, I just went to a place. Uh, you'll have to check it out. It's called San Miguel de Allende, and it is, a, it is a magic city in Mexico. It is one of the oldest cities also, and it is a, a city with a very, very, very rich history and culture. Um, there's also, what does that mean, magic city? So, magic cities are like the, the cornerstone cities, like the original, some of the original col uh, colonized cities of the country. So they're really pretty, really well taken care of. The police do not let a lot of shenanigans happen there. Uh, and they're very, very tight on, you know, cartels being there. They're like, you guys cannot be here because this is a huge tourist city. So those are magic cities. So I just went to one uh, about three weeks ago and oh my god I was I felt like I was in Spain it was unreal it was beautiful it was 
80 degrees in the morning, 50 degrees at night. Um, you just walk everywhere, cobblestone roads, just beautiful, you know, just picturesque. All this uh, bougainvillea, these plants that were like draped over these, uh, like all these old, old, old buildings, like these beautiful flowers and everything. It's just, it's just beautiful. And then I love Mexico City just because of the city itself and all the you have so many beautiful museums, the culture, you know, you have the temples up north, you have the gondolas down south. It's, it's just beautiful there. I just love the, I just love Mexico in general. <laughs> yeah. Where is the first place you mentioned in Mexico? Uh, San Miguel de Allende is, a, yeah. it's about, it's close to a city called Leon. Leon, Guanajuato. So central, central Mexico, inland Mexico. Here's Mexico City, and you kind of come just straight down here, about three or four hours uh, east, southeast of it, and you're there. And you would, you'd be like, oh my god, where am I? Like this is this is unreal. It's just something out of a. It's it's like you're in Spain. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's just really pretty. It's just beautiful. Well kept, no cash. Everybody's super polite. Wow. Okay, text me the name of that when we're done. I'm <laughs> really curious. They have a. They actually have a um, a Rosewood Hotel there, <laughs> and uh, I guess from what I understand, the minimum stay is like five hundred a night. I'm like, whoa. I mean, the place I was staying at was like a hundred bucks, and it was like a resort, and it was beautiful. Wow. It's it's pretty well kept up, yeah. And it's not hard to get to either. I'll, there's shuttle services, like, directly from the airport to there. They, they have, like, your name. They'll be like, hey. So oh. get right in, like, like a chauffeur. It's the coolest thing I've ever done. <laughs> okay. All right. No, I, I, I absolutely love Mexico. I go there once a year. That's what I'm asking. Oh, I'll send you. This place was on National Geographic, too. It's one of the most beautiful cities in all of North America. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, now I'm really curious. Okay, so what does the future look like for you? So I'm a very business savvy kind of person. Um, once things start to kind of slow down, I'll probably reassess everything. And if it makes more sense to go back to work, working at night, I'll, go, I'll do it. And then I'll do this, uh, you know, part time. But um, as of right now, this is kind of like a, uh, I don't, maybe this might last three years. Maybe this might last 10. You never know. So, but once it comes to a, a position where I'm like, okay, you know, I think I could make more money going back to what I was doing, or I want to do something a little bit different again, like segue out of this, then that's what I'll do. But right now, this is, this is it. <laughs> yeah. No, I think one thing though, that really separates you from a lot of the people in the industry is that you have that to fall back on. Yeah. So for me, like this, this was an option A, B, C, or D. It was like E or F. You know, I had, I had a lot of things that I was like, okay, if all this doesn't work out, <laughs> then, hey, let's give this a shot. So I've got, I've got things to fall back on, which I'm very grateful for. So just kind of lucky. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. I mean, if you ever do have to fall back, you're going to have a gap in your resume to explain. Yeah, they'll be like, what happened? I'll be like, oh, I don't know. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to say. I'd be like, well, I came into some money. I wouldn't be lying. <laughs> Actually, I never thought about it like that, but you are absolutely right. I came into some money. <laughs> I won the lottery. <laughs> Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Is there anything you haven't done on camera that you want to do? I don't think so. <laughs> I think I've shown. No? 
probably like 50 or 60 scenes. I'm, I don't think there's anything I haven't done at this point. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. So for the people watching, where can they find your content, your social media, fan sites, Twitter, Facebook, all that good shit? Um, you can find a lot of my content on, I mean, obviously next door studios is going to have a lot of my stuff. They're going to have a lot more of the high quality, like 4k ultra HD kind of things. Um, you can also find me on Instagram at Blaine O'Connor XX. Um, my Twitter is just Blaine O'Connor, which is hilarious. And then, um, my Hands is Blaine O'Connor XXX. So it's all pretty easy, but yeah. you can find everything. I mean, it's my Twitter's got plenty of material there that um, seems to keep everybody very happy. You know, OnlyFans is a little bit different. I use OnlyFans kind of like for my modeling and photo shoots. So that's a little bit. And then my, my, my fiance as well. That, that's kind of like his and my thing. And then um, obviously OnlyFans is OnlyFans. <laughs> Do you have just for fans as well? I haven't started that yet, but I do. I do keep needing to start it. I'm going to start it next year because I'm going to have to do the taxes for it this year. Okay. Because then I'm going to have content for to keep just for fans going for who knows two to three years, while building new content for OnlyFans. Yeah. No, I get that. All right. Um, and then. For the people watching who have never seen any of your content, how would you summarize it? Like your fan content, not your studio. I mean, there's no way you're not going to find something in there that gets you off. I mean, there's literally the style of porn is there, you know, three ways, gang bangs, um, me taking just massively absurd penises inside of my, my body. <laughs> You know, and also me topping, stuff like that. You know, muscle worship. You know, there, there's there's literally everything. Every, anything that you could want is probably on my page. Okay. So I have a, you know, I try to appease to everybody. I try to, you know, I want to make sure that if someone comes to my page, I don't want them to be like, oh, I feel gypped. I feel, you know, I think that's my Midwestern yeah. way, you know. I don't want someone to feel like, oh, I got taken advantage of. <laughs> Yeah. I want them to find no. there. They're like, oh, okay, that was worth it. <laughs> no, I agree 100% with that. Um, and then one uh, last question. Did the working out and like the bodybuilding, did that just carry over from the Navy or did that come about later? So this is kind of fun. So actually I was a uh, nationally ranked kickboxer. What? Yeah. So I did a I did kickboxing at a super high level. After I got out of the military, I jumped into kickboxing to have more structure. So because I got in a little bit of trouble out of the military, and uh, they were like, "Hey, you need to find something that's going to keep you um, out of trouble." Like, oh, what about Mark? And they're like, "Yeah, anything anything is better than what you're doing now, kid." <laughs> They're like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Anything is better than what you're doing right now. So I actually, yeah, I did martial arts, uh, Muay Thai specifically for um, uh, six, six years. I was active and I still dabble in it, but it's just too hard to keep up now. I'm just, I don't want to get hurt anymore. You know, I've got actually a broken nose. You might not be able to see that, but um, no. So I've actually, I've stayed pretty much outside of the military, you know, with martial arts and just discipline, I've stayed pretty, pretty well in shape. Damn. <laughs> I had no idea. What? Dude, I would put that in your fucking profile. What the fuck? <laughs> I, I had it in there for a while. I just, I don't know. I took it out. <laughs> yeah, no, put that back in. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I can send you some pictures. It was actually I uh, I was five and two. Yeah, I wow. Yeah, I fought uh, in two thousand fourteen. I was uh, ranked third in North America in uh, the one hundred and forty seven weight division. 
Wow. Okay, that's impressive. I don't know how we didn't cover that earlier, but that's 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 not a small feat. You should be very, very proud of that. It was pretty cool. I actually, uh, no, I, I go back home when I go to Omaha. I go and visit my gym, and everybody even there knows I'm gay, and they don't give a shit, which is cool. Everyone's very accepting there, too. So Nice. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Um. I've had an absolute blast talking to you, Blaine. You're, and I would definitely love to shoot with you if you ever happen to come to Denver for any reason. Sure, I'd love to. Yeah, if it ever, if it ever, um, if it ever transpired where that could happen, I'd love to do that. Also, I appreciate you giving me your time today. You know, interviewing me, that was a lot of fun. I really got to I really felt like I got to open up, and hopefully, a lot of people get to see a different side of me, and uh, you know. If, uh, if they like it, I hope they like it. <laughs> hey guys, just want to say thank you for watching this video. And if you did really enjoy it, I just wanted to mention there are two ways that you can help to support this channel. On the right side, there are three little dots. If you click those, there is a super thanks button. And on the left hand side, there is a join button where you can join this channel. There are three different tiers of memberships. The top tier does actually allow one-on-one -on -one messaging with me via Discord. And I personally answer that it is not a service. That's just, you know, both of those are ways that you can help support me as a content creator in this channel. I mention this because YouTube is by far the thing that I enjoy doing the most. It's the thing I'm most passionate about. And unfortunately, a lot of the sexual videos the porn star confessions, the Dom sub, all that stuff. It is not monetized due to the nature of the videos. But either way, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you guys all have an absolutely amazing week. I love you all.